Hey everyone, welcome back to my Logic Pro 11 MIDI Essentials course. In this video, I wanna talk about MIDI controllers. I'm gonna show you different types of MIDI controllers, how MIDI controllers communicate notes and other musical data to your DAW. We'll also break down continuous controllers in a little more detail. I'll go through the continuous controller message structure, and I'll also show you how to assign continuous controllers in Logic Pro. A MIDI controller is simply a device that can generate MIDI data, which are called MIDI events. A note on message is a MIDI event, a note off message is another MIDI event, and moving the modulation wheel, a knob, or fader triggers a stream of what are called control change messages. The importance of a MIDI controller is that it's your primary physical interface for performing and automating uh, musical information in your DAW. Yes, you can certainly just click in your notes with your mouse if you like, but this gives you full tactile control over musical information in your DAW. Not just notes, but you can also automate things with your CC controls and the modulation wheel and the pitch bend. Now, when you think of a MIDI controller, you're probably thinking of a MIDI keyboard like one of these. And keyboard controllers are great because the keys send note on and off messages and they are almost always velocity sensitive. MIDI controllers come in many shapes and forms like the Alesis V25, which includes 25 keys, rotary encoders, push buttons, modulation wheel, pitch bend, and beat pads for finger drumming. My Novation Launch Key 61 has even more controls. It has nine faders, eight knobs, modulation wheel, pitch bend, beat pads, push buttons, and a bunch of other specialized controls. But what about something like this? This is Novation Launchpad Pro, and it replaces the typical MIDI keyboard with an eight by eight grid of pads. Now, each of these pads can be used for note entry, for finger drumming. There's even a built-in step sequencer on this thing. And you can even create your own custom faders, push buttons. So there's a lot of really cool things you can do with an alternative controller like Launchpad. And not all MIDI controllers have note input. This is the Monogram Creative Console. And this is a magnetic modular system with knobs, faders, and other controls that can be mapped to parameters in your effects or in your instruments. So you can have full tactile control over your sound design. And this is the Launch Control XL from Novation. This is a MIDI-based mixing control surface with 24 rotary encoders, eight faders, and 16 push buttons. So controls like the modulation wheel, faders, and knobs, these are all examples of continuous controllers, which work by sending positional data using a type of MIDI message called a control change message, or CC for short. While CC officially stands for control change, you'll often hear people use the terms interchangeably to refer to any knob or fader. So next, let's break down the structure of control change messages. So the status byte is going to define that the message is a control change message. The first data byte communicates what specific CC is being used, identified by a number between zero and 127. So for example, modulation wheel is always CC number one, and if you use a sustain pedal, sustain pedal is CC 64. Each one of these faders and knobs has a different CC value assigned to it. And the second data byte is what relays the actual positional value from zero to 127. Now, if you go look at the official list of control change messages over at MIDI.org, or just do a quick Google search, you'll see that certain controls have names like breath controller, foot controller, volume, balance, pan, expression, effects controls. Some of these have been standardized for hardware compatibility reasons, while others are general purpose controls or undefined controls. When you work with a MIDI controller and a DAW like Logic, you can generally speaking map any CC to any control. Okay, so next up, let me show you how to set up your MIDI controller in Logic. I'll show you how to do a quick sound check just to make sure everything's working properly. And then after that, I'll show you how to set up your knobs and faders. 
and assign these CCs to controls in instruments and effects plugins. Most MIDI controllers these days work over USB-A or USB-C, and they are class compliant. And what that means is that you can pretty much just plug it into your computer and Logic will automatically recognize it and be able to talk with it. However, if your MIDI controller does have special software or drivers, I do recommend installing that because that may unlock additional features and functionality that you wouldn't have otherwise. So to get started, plug in your MIDI controller, install any drivers that you need to, open up Logic, and what we're gonna do is start with a MIDI software instrument track. And remember, MIDI controllers don't actually make any sound on their own. You have to send the MIDI data through an instrument. So down here where it says instrument, I'm gonna select Alchemy and I'll load that up in stereo, and then I'll click Create. And so you can see here, this is our Alchemy instrument. And then here is the track that is associated with that instrument. So at this point, you should be able to just select that track and play a few notes. So mine's working, but if you wanna double check to see if Logic is even recognizing your MIDI controller, go up to Logic Pro settings, go down to MIDI, and then from here, go from general over to the inputs tab and make sure that your MIDI controller is showing up here in the list. And furthermore, make sure that it is actually turned on. It actually doesn't turn off the MIDI controller. It just turns off the MIDI controller for logic. So it won't receive any MIDI data. So that's a way to check that. For my MIDI controller, I have to turn on a couple of settings here just to get a generic uh, MIDI setting. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And um, let's double check that the modulation wheel is working as well. So there's this cool movement effect that's been auto assigned to the modulation wheel. And sometimes, especially with things like modulation wheel, that will be pre-assigned. There's nothing else you have to do. But for other controls, you have to assign these manually using Logic's controller assignments dialog. So let me show you how to do that. So let's say that we want to control this cutoff knob right here. So that's controlling the cutoff frequency of a filter. Let's say that I want to assign that to my first knob right here. To do that, press Command L. This will bring up your controller assignments dialog. And what you're going to do is you're going to click on that knob in the instrument or move it around. And you'll see in the controller assignments dialog, it says alchemy cutoff. So it's trying to learn that parameter and you'll see that learn mode is on. So now it's waiting for us to turn a knob or fader on our MIDI controller. So let's do that. And you'll see there that it's assigned the cutoff in alchemy to CC31, which is this knob right here. Now, when you're done, just click learn mode to turn off learn mode, close out that dialog. And now I can use that knob to control this cutoff parameter in Alchemy. Now, one last thing I want to touch on here is Pitch Bend. Pitch Bend is actually its own unique independent MIDI message. So it's not a control change like modulation wheel, even though it looks a lot like modulation wheel and functions similarly, it's not a continuous controller, nor is it a control change message. With pitch bend, the status byte defines that it's a pitch bend message, but both data bytes are used to relay positional data. So this gives it a much higher resolution of 16,384 possible steps which will make sure that you get smooth artifact free pitch modulation. So because pitch bend is recognized as a unique standardized message, you never have to manually learn it. It'll automatically be set up as long as the instrument supports pitch bend. Okay, so that's MIDI controllers and continuous controllers and how to map them using the controller assignments dialog in Logic Pro. Later on in the course, we're gonna dive even deeper into continuous controllers, and I'll show you some creative effects that can be made by writing and editing automation with these controls. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Remember, if you want to get early access to this course and all of my future courses, you can either become a YouTube channel member or you can purchase the course over at my website, logicproguide.com. Thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.